Would you like to produce a homemade bread that is full of flavor and that is easy to do? This has just three steps. Mix the ingredients, put them in the tin, wait for it to, to raise and then bake it. And that's it. It produces a very nice loaf. It's very, it's extremely surprising. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a trick how you can take it to the next level with very, very little effort. Let's roll. I just wanted to explain that this is a classic recipe for non-knead bread that is, was published in 1940 by Doris Grant. After one hour and a half, two hours, it has, it has raised very nicely and it is ready to be baked. You can sprinkle something on top, a bit of flour also makes a, makes a very nice rustic effect. I'm going to sprinkle some, some sesame seeds. This is the resulting Doris uh, Grant loaf. I'm going to make a slice around here so you can see. It's a nice sound. Forgot to mention it is done when it sounds hollow. And you see this is the, the resulting loaf of bread. This is a slice where you can see the very nice texture. The trick is very simple. It requires that you do something the night before, making a pre-ferment or a pullish by mixing 120 grams of flour and 120 grams of water plus one gram of fresh yeast. You can see my other video about the measures of the yeasts and if you don't have a scale then you can see how you, be you can better make them. It will definitely pay off. The difference that you will find is both in, in, uh, in texture and here you can see that the shape is much much better achieved one that I have uh, used the pre-ferment and then at the level of, of smell and taste it's going to be way more developed and it's going to be more intense and more rich. I guess that you wonder what does this man do with all this bread he's baking? Well I want to show you what I normally do is I put it in, in, in uh, freezing bags and I freeze it in the freezer and I just wanted to show you something because I was talking before about the difference between using a pre-ferment or not. So this is the bread I made without the pre-ferment and what happened is, and this is very common, so it, it, it makes a hole in the middle, can, be, can make bigger holes somewhere, that, somewhere in other parts and this is because it, with, the, with the, a lot of yeast what it has, is happening is racing very fast. But then it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not really creating a good structure. So when you try to slice it, then it breaks into crumbs. And you see that I couldn't make very thin slices. So the slices they remain very, very big because what is happening is, is that it, it's, it breaks into, into crumbs. However, the one that uses a pre-ferment, you see that I can really go, uh, it has a structure. So I can really have extremely thin slices without a problem because it's the, the structure of the, of the bread that is holding them. So, in conclusion, of course you can make, just yes, mix everything and put the, the yeast and it will yield a really, really flavorful and fantastic bread. However, 
if you want to take it to, a, to another level and use way less uh, yeast and get better results, better structure, then it is very simple. You just start the night before, it's just mixing the ingredients for the pre-ferment and then you will get, with almost the same process, you will get a much, much, much better result. So you see here. So, bon appétit. Thank you.